let's talk about angles created by transversals. Now the word transversal is new for us, so before we start something new, let's review what we should already know. Take a second and define each of these words. Pause the video and write down your answer. Let's see how you did. The definition of parallel lines is lines that never intersect. The definition of perpendicular lines is lines that intersect to form right angles. And intersecting lines doesn't really have a formal definition, it just means that they intersect, they touch somewhere, they cross at a point, and they may or may not intersect to form right angles. There is a difference between perpendicular and intersecting. Perpendicular is a special kind of intersecting lines. Most lines actually just fall into the intersecting lines category. And of course the opposite of intersecting is parallel, because parallel lines never intersect. Vertical angles are non-adjacent angles created by the intersection of two lines. That's their definition. And then by the vertical angles congruence theorem, we can say that they are congruent. And linear pairs are adjacent angles whose non-common sides are opposite rays. That's the definition of linear pair. And then by the linear pair postulate, we can say that they are supplementary. All five of these vocab terms are going to be very important for the entire unit and for what we are doing today. So let's take a look at that word transversal. A transversal is a line that intersects two or more other lines at different points. So for example, in this diagram that we see here, line T is a transversal because it intersects line A at point P and it intersects line B at point Q. I kind of think about transversals like highways. If you think about line T like it's Highway 70, and line A like it's Highway K, and line B like it's T.R. Hughes, line T is the main line, the main highway, the main road that goes through all the other lines or through all the other roads. And the angles created by the intersection of these lines, or the intersection of a highway and each of the roads along the way, each of those angle pairs has a special name. So let's learn them. Corresponding angles occupy the same position out of the four angles created by the intersection of the lines. See how when line L and line T intersect, they made four angles? And line T and line K, when they intersected, they also formed four angles. Out of those four angles for each pair of lines that intersected, if the angles occupy the same spot, like how angle 1 is in the top left-hand corner, and angle 5 is in the top left hand corner. That makes them corresponding angles. There is actually four pairs of corresponding angles in this diagram. We already see angle 1 and angle 5. Can you name any others? Well, there's angle 2 and angle 6. They both occupy the top right position. There's angle 3 and angle 7. They both occupy the bottom left position. And there's angle 4 and angle 8. They both occupy the bottom right position. So corresponding just means that they're in the same spot out of the four angles created by the intersections of the lines. Next up, we have alternate exterior angles. Alternate means that they're on opposite sides of the transversal. Our transversal is line T, and angle 1 is on the left-hand side, and angle 8 is on the right-hand side. That makes them alternate. An exterior means that they're on the outside of the lines that got intersected by the transversal. They're outside of line L and line K. So angle 1 and 8, that's a pair of alternate exterior angles. There is actually another pair as well. Do you see it? It's angle 2 and angle 7. They're also on opposite sides of the transversal. One is on the left and one is on the right. And they're on the outsides of line L and line K. That makes them alternate exterior. We also have alternate interior angles, which is very similar, except instead of being on the outside of line L and K, it's in between lines L and K. So angle 3 and angle 6 would be an example of alternate interior angles. They're alternate because they're on opposite sides of line T, one's on the left and one's on the right. And they're interior because they're in between line L and K. There is another pair of alternate interior angles, that would be angle 4 and angle 5. They're alternate because they're on opposite sides of line T, and they're interior because they're in between line L and line K. 
And the last special kind of pair of angles that we have for this type of a diagram is called consecutive interior angles. Consecutive means that they're on the same side of the transversal. So see how angle 3 and angle 5 are both on the left-hand side of line T? That makes them consecutive because they're on the same side. And then interior, we already discussed that. That's that they are in between line L and line K. So that makes angle 3 and angle 5 consecutive interior angles. The other pair of consecutive interior angles in this diagram would be angle 4 and angle 6. They're consecutive because they're on the same side of the transversal. They're both on the right-hand side. And they're interior because they're in between line L and line K. So as a quick vocab recap, Alternate means that they're on opposite sides of the transversal, and consecutive means that they're on the same side of the transversal. So that means that alternate and consecutive are antonyms. They are the opposite meaning of each other. Interior means that they're between the two lines that were intersected by the transversal, and exterior means that they're on the outside of the lines that were intersected by the transversal. So interior and exterior are also antonyms. They have opposite meanings. And then we have corresponding, which is just kind of its own thing. Corresponding means that they occupy the same position in relation to the intersection of the lines. So let's take a look at an example and identify transversals and lines and angles. First, in this diagram, which line is the transversal? Is it A, B, or C? Yeah, it's line C, because line C is the one that intersects the other two lines, which means the answer to Question B would be lines A and B. The lines that were intersected by the transversal are line A and line B. What kind of pair of angles is angle 2 and angle 6? Well, the first thing I notice is that one angle is above the transversal C, and the other angle is below transversal C. That makes them alternate, because they're on opposite sides of the transversal. The other thing I notice about these angles is that they are in between the two lines that were intersected by the transversal. They're in between line A and line B. That makes them interior. So these would be alternate interior angles. What kind of angle pair are angle 7 and angle 5? Well, I notice that both of these are basically in the bottom right-hand corner. Out of the four angles that got created by the intersection of line A and line C, Angle 7 is in the bottom right, and out of the four angles that got created by the intersection of line B and line C, angle 5 is in the bottom right. That makes them corresponding angles. What kind of angle pair are 6 and 7? Well, I notice that both of these angles are below the transversal C. That makes them consecutive. They're on the same side of the transversal. And I notice that they're in between line A and line B. That makes them interior. So these would be called consecutive interior angles. What kind of angle pair are angle 8 and angle 4? Well, I see that they are on opposite sides of the transversal. Angle 8 is below the transversal and angle 4 is above the transversal, so that makes them alternate. And I see that they're on the outside of line A and line B. That makes them exterior. So I would be able to call angle 8 and angle 4 an alternate exterior angle pair. What kind of pair of angles is angle 3 and angle 5? Well, this is actually a bit of an old school question. These are vertical angles. Line A had nothing to do with angle 3 and angle 5. I'm really just looking at this part of my diagram. I see that angle 3 and angle 5 are non-adjacent angles created by the intersection of two lines. That makes them vertical angles. And what kind of angle pair is 1 and 2? Well, again, that's an old-school question. They're a linear pair. I don't really care about line B for this question. All I care about is that line C is a straight line, and line A comes off of it. Angle 1 and angle 2 are built from a straight line. You can also say that they are adjacent angles whose non-common sides are opposite rays. That makes them a linear pair. All right, let's see if we can name all of the pairs of each type of angle. So I want you to pause the video and write down as many corresponding and alternate exterior and vertical angles and all of that. Pause the video and see how many of each type of angle pair you can write down. Let's see how you did. There should be four pairs of corresponding angles in this diagram. We have 1 and 5, their top left. We have 2 and 6, their top right. 
Then we have 3 and 7, their bottom left. And finally, we have 4 and 8, their bottom right. For alternate interior, there's only two pairs. We have 3 and 6. They're on opposite sides, and they're in between the two lines that were intersected. And same with angle 4 and angle 5. They're on opposite sides of the transversal and in between the lines that got intersected. There's also only two pairs of alternate exterior angles. That would be 1 and 8. They're on opposite sides of the transversal. And they're on the exterior of the two lines that got intersected. Same with angle 2 and angle 7. Consecutive interior, there's two pairs. I have 3 and 5. They're both on the left side of the transversal and in between the two lines that got intersected. And same thing with angle 4 and angle 6. They're on the same side. They're both on the right and they're in between J and K. Vertical angles, there are four pairs. We have angle 1 and angle 4, and we have angle 2 and angle 3. Because remember, for every pair of intersecting lines, you always get two pairs of vertical angles. Well, I have two pairs of intersecting lines. So I got two pairs of vertical angles from the intersection of line J and line T, and I'll also get two more pairs of vertical angles from the intersection of line T and line K. I get angle 5 and angle 8, and I get angle 6 and angle 7. Now linear pairs, there's eight pairs of linear pairs in this diagram, so you might not have written down all of them and that's okay, but hopefully you got at least a few of them. We have angle 1 and angle 2, angle 3 and angle 4, angle 5 and angle 6, and angle 7 and angle 8. And we also have angle 1 and angle 3, angle 2 and angle 4, angle 5 and angle 7, and angle 6 and angle 8. Remember linear pairs are just adjacent angles built from a straight line, so like for example, angle 1 and angle 2 are a linear pair, because angle J is the straight line that they're built from, and T is the transversal, or the ray that comes in between those two. So angle 1 and angle 2 would be a linear pair, because they are adjacent angles whose non-common sides are opposite rays. And that's all you need to know about identifying corresponding alternate exterior, alternate interior, and consecutive interior angles. In our next lesson, we'll talk about what happens to those kinds of pairs of angles if the lines that got intersected are parallel.